Hey guys, this is Jay and this is Port Numbers in less than 3 minutes. So if you're like me, nobody has given you a simple example for port numbers. There's actually two kinds of ports. The first are logical ports and the second are physical ports. So you might be aware of these kind of networking ports. These are called as physical ports. So when networking traffic enters a device, it happens via these physical ports. This traffic is then sent to the operating system. This is where logical ports come in. They help transfer this traffic from the device to the operating system. Now let's look at what logical ports actually do. So these logical ports are like entrances and exits to a tunnel. Now each entrance leads to only one exit and each tunnel signifies a specific process. So for example, when traffic is sent to port 80, it means it is sent to HTTP. When it is sent to port 20, it's sent to FTP. Port 25 is SMTP and so on. There are actually about 1000 of these well-known ports, but there are a total of about 65,000 ports. Ports such as SMTP, HTTP or FTP account for only about 1024 of these ports. Now the remainder of the ports are divided between registered ports and dynamic ports. Registered ports take up a range from about 1024 to 45,000. Registered ports are ports that have been assigned to companies taken by companies uh, to run their own services such as Microsoft SQL Server and so on. The rest of these ports are called as dynamic ports and these are temporary ports which are used for the transfer of network traffic. They are also called as private ports and are assigned and not pre-assigned to tasks by the operating system. So for example, you are sending a message as a client to the server. When you begin the transmission, the TCP will randomly generate a dynamic port number from the list of available dynamic port numbers and this will become its source port. This is going to be a chunky number because dynamic port numbers start at about 45,000. Now remember, this has only been assigned as a temporary port for the duration of this transmission. So now when it sends the data over to the server, if it wants to send the data to, for example, HTTP, it will pick port 80 as its destination port, since that is a fixed port number for HTTP. And the server knows it's going to receive a transmission at port 80. So it will also be listening to this port continuously. Now, once the server receives the transmission, it knows what the source port of the client was. So that will become the destination port for the server and the protocol's port number will be the source port. This is how basic transmission using port numbers occurs. For more about networking and TCP IP, check out these two videos.